How's it going guys? Medium difficulty question for renal pathology, step one, internal medicine, TCK. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and me, HLMA underscore medical. Links down below for me telegram. Links to the telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 49-year-old woman, one week history of puffiness around her eyes and ankles. She has history of breast cancer that was managed with lumpectomy radiation a year ago. Mammogram three months ago showed no recurrences. Serum almon. Low 2.5 grams per deciliter should be 3.4 to 5.4 grams per deciliter. Your analysis, four plus protein, no RBCs, which means we have a nephrotic syndrome because if we have re uh, red urine, blood in the urine, that'd be nephritic syndrome instead. Renal biopsy specimen is shown, which the following most likely diagnosis. We have the light microscopy histo slide here. I'll talk about this as we move through the question. Should I say renal amyloidosis, wrong fucking answer. You need to know in Yosemite, renal amyloidosis is going to be due to multiple myeloma. Amyloidosis means protein depositing where it shouldn't be depositing. In multiple myeloma, you have plasma cell hyperproliferation, greater than 10% uh, plasma cells in the bone marrow. Plasma cells are B-cell origin. They produce aminoglobulin. So the first step in diagnosis for multiple myeloma is serum protein electrophoresis, which is going to show us elevated serum kappa, lambda, IgG light chains. And immunoglobulins are proteins. So those will fly through different organs, such as the heart, cause cardiac amyloidosis with diastolic dysfunction as for heart sound, can fly through the kidney, cause benz jones proanuria, show up in the urine, but they can also deposit in the renal parenchyma, causing renal amyloidosis, which is a type of nephrotic syndrome. There's no blood in the urine. So if you get multiple myeloma plus some sort of renal issue, that's renal amyloidosis, and that's going to be apple green biorefringence with Congo red stain. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diffuse proliferative glenophritis, wrong fucking answer, DPGN. This is easily just going to be SLE plus red urine. That's all you need to know, okay? There's other nonsense details such as wire looping, capillary pattern, etc. It's garbage, okay? You just need to know that if you get a question that's SLE and they tell you lupus nephritis, okay, there might be increased creatinine, and they say there's blood in the urine, that's just DPGN. You can technically get other conditions of the kidney associated with SLE, such as membranous glomerulonephritis, but membranous glomerulonephritis is a nephrotic syndrome, not a nephritic syndrome. So red urine plus SLE, that's going to be DPGN. That'll be overwhelming majority of SLE renal questions, lupus nephritis. But as I said, if you get SLE plus no blood in the urine and there's some sort of renal, renal condition, you want to be thinking about uh, just regular membranous glomerulonephritis. There's a lot we can talk about. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, lipoid nephrosis, wrong fucking answer. Just a fancy way of saying minimal change disease. Okay, so minimal change disease. It's going to be on light microscopy, no changes seen. Electron microscopy, effacement of the podocytic foot processes. It's going to be a child, almost always, 9 out of 10 times, it's going to be a child who has some sort of upper respiratory tract viral infection and then has uh, ascites, periorbital edema, and pedal edema. Okay, so it's just, and there's no blood in the urine. Okay, it's just a nephrotic syndrome. So that's classic. They just say, kid had a runny nose for four days, now has periorbital edema, ascites, pedal edema. There's protein in the urine, no blood in the urine. That's just minimal change disease, like point nephrosis. That's classic, okay? But it's a long discussion. You could be aware that you assume need not mention viral infections. So if the vignette is just, here's an eight-year-old, and there's just puffy eyes, and pedal edema, ascites, and no other information, that's just minimal change disease until proven otherwise. And you can treat it with steroids. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D. Actually, I should have said um, the one out of 10 times. I said nine out of 10, it's peds. Okay, viral infection usually for minimal changes. The one out of 10 times, it can rarely be an adult who has Hodgkin lymphoma, okay? For whatever fucking reason, Hodgkin disease can be associated with minimal change disease. It's low yield though. Choice D, membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis. Wrong fucking answer, okay? So this is gonna be red urine. We don't have red urine here. There's no RBCs in the urine. This is simply just going to be hepatitis C or malignancy plus red urine. That's literally it, okay? So you get a patient with hep C, you get a patient with some sort of malignancy, miscellaneous, and they tell you there's red urine, you wanna be thinking about membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis, okay? And the first step in diagnosis they want for uh, 2CK, or I should just say next best step in management, is renal biopsy first, not steroids, because renal biopsy is going to guide our management. 
You don't have to worry about nonsense details for membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis, such as duplication of the basement membrane, dense deposits, C3 nephritic factor, all nonsense, garbage for you, assimilate. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, membrane glomerulonephritis, correct answer. So this is just a nephrotic syndrome with uh, manifold, miscellaneous, uh, multifarious etiologies. This light microscopy is showing us what appears to be inflamed uh, an, infl an inflamed nephron, okay? And I've seen this image on NBME before, okay? And what they want you to know is solid tumors, different types of tumors, as I said, multifarious, miscellaneous, could be breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, any type of cancer really in a patient who has nephrotic syndrome, you want to be thinking about, okay, that could be membranous sclerosis. It can be uh, infection-related, hepatitis B, it can be uh, autoimmune, okay? SLE, as I mentioned before, one out of 10 times. Uh, RA, okay? It can be drugs, dapsone, gold salts, sulfonamides. It can be primary, which is autoimmune uh, antibody mediated. So antibodies against phospholipase A2 receptor. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.